Hello everyone, this episode uh, is called number 7 because the English version was a bit of a ahead with the Italian version so I brought them in sync so it should have been really 6 but it's 7 so um, I get all the episodes so today I will do only, I will cover only till uh, where I stopped with the Italian version yesterday um, so just to make you aware that um, yeah six is this is six and seven basically together uh, not just uh, seven in a way uh, i need to thank uh, fabio Cucci for uh, uh, letting me uh, doing uh, this stream uh, without him without his approval this stream would not be possible for those actually that know me most people know me as phase 101 but Actually, I am Prince of Phase 101. I just like to use Phase 101 because I think it's a merit to all the whole group, not just to me. Okay, so that's why I used Phase 101 and not Prince Phase 101. I mean, it's it's all of us together, um, what we are and what we do, not, not just me. And let's continue where we, uh, where we left in the last... Um, in the last episode, basically, of um, this Amiga 68000 assembly programming and development course, uh, which is based on the book of Fabio Tucci, as I said. So here I have the first example, but actually we need to start from um, the uh, book. OK. This is it, guys. We now stop doing theory and we actually go into the practice and we start um, actually programming the Amiga hardware 
as we should okay this chapter is all about copper we will not finish this chapter okay the first nine pages of this chapter because i believe it's 10 pages long um is all theory about the copper there are only two examples i think in the first nine pages but then in the last page there is a lot of examples and i'm going to show you what i mean by a lot of examples um which we will cover in the next stream um so if i do uh, read so all that starts with three okay so i have loaded three a okay but all these are all examples okay of how to program the copper okay and examples and there are some nice effects i can show you some of them uh, let me uh, just to what your appetite let's put it this way this is one copper bar cycling copper bar um there's uh i don't know if it's the last one or g i think maybe it's g yeah this is what we are used to see in uh, creating equalizers now on the amiga um so yeah we will we'll see these things and these things don't take any uh, as such memory because we are not really using the screen here. Okay, so using the copper is quite an effective way of uh, also saving memory in a way and creating some effect. Um, anyway, um, the book transforms itself now. Okay, it's really uh, it's really about using the amiga and as you know i i'm doing this series because i want more programmers out there programming on the amiga uh, this is my main aim why i'm doing this um i used to program the amiga 30 years ago i forgot most of this stuff okay so if you haven't downloaded the sources uh, the book please download the book um i cannot um emphasize more i mean if you're if you cannot understand italian i understand it that you wouldn't download the book but there is the sources you need them whether you understand italian or not the code you will understand and it will help you understand what it's trying to to do so if eventually you will need to have this source with you to follow because the sources will grow okay so they are not always going to be small and you'll start seeing as we go along um so you will need to follow um where i am and what i'm doing so i do recommend to download the rem gem um discs um and extract the sources and use the sources okay so um if you uh, recall um we used to um um, how to say write to a register okay by using i'm just going to scroll the page a bit down okay um so so basically to write to a color register okay we were using the move okay command which is a cpu instruction okay or a cpu command so we were uh, how to say programming the hardware the custom chip uh, chips basically in this case the uh, where the sound and uh, uh, graphics are okay by using the cpu but there's another way of how to program the the custom chips the registers of the custom chip and that is by using the copper the copper has got its own instructions and the and one of the instructions is a move also okay so the um how to say we're going to see okay in this uh, in this uh, chapter of how to program the hardware registers okay 
not by the CPU, by but the by but by the copper. Okay. Yes, uh, the copper has got three instructions. Um, I, I do not want to run. Okay. So, um, um, but Ozzy, thanks for um, um, mentioning them. It's move, wait, and skip. The book mentions move and wait uh, here. Does it mention skip? Um, in this chapter, okay. So for now, um, skip. Um, let's say we're going to skip it. <laughs> let's let's say that. Um, but we will we will come to it, okay. So as you can see here, okay. We are moving. Remember, it's a uh, it, the registers. The custom registers are sixteen bit. We are moving a word into. In this case, is color index uh, zero, which is DFF one eight zero, and again the same color into color index one. Okay. Um. So in uh, when I say, um. Oh, I I better explain this for those that maybe has joined and haven't uh, have missed some parts. When I say color index register one or zero, uh, let me find them, the FF180. Okay, we're talking about these two. Okay, this is color index zero and this is color index one. And as you can see, this is the FF180 and the FF182. Now, for the copper, you do not need to specify the FF. Okay, the, cop the copper knows the custom registers always start at the FF. Okay, so please um, bear uh, understand that you do not need to specify that for the copper. Okay, so when you see 180, we mean DFF 180. When you see 182, we mean DFF 182. Okay. It is impossible to move data outside of the FF. Ex yes, exactly. As far as I know, you cannot move. Uh, Ozzy, I agree with you. As far as I know, you cannot move data outside the FF uh, XXX. Uh, to write outside, I uh, usually use a copper interrupt. Yes, um, which we will um, talk about later on. Let's put it this way. How does the copper work? Okay, so we already mentioned that uh, the copper has got three instructions, but the copper starts uh, from line zero on the screen, top of the screen, and scrolls down, okay? Do one raster line at a, at a time till it reaches the bottom, and then it goes again to the top, okay? It builds a frame, okay? The copper is building the frame that we see uh, on the screen. Um, it does it um, on PAL systems 50 times per second, okay? So the frame is refreshed 50 times per second. So each time the copper is, ex is executing our instructions at 50 times per second. On NTSC, it is 60, okay? Now, for those that come from the Commodore 64, okay? And for those that um, do program the Commodore 64, and manage things using the raster line uh, on the Commodore 64 to maybe split the screen into colors, okay? Just something simple, okay? We use the raster line, we create an interrupt, and we tell the um, CPU, okay, we now want this color at uh, at this raster line, okay? On the Amiga there, we don't need to create interrupts, okay? The copper does this for us, and in a very simple way, okay? So it's quite easy to um, do um, change colors on the screen. Another advantage on uh, from the Commodore 64 is that the copper can do the Y, as on the Commodore 64, we wait for a, um, a, y, um, a vertical scan, you know, one of the lines, but can also do an X, which the Commodore 64 can't. Okay, I, I, I don't want to say Maybe I'm not correct saying can't, okay? But for now, just 
uh, think it like that because I know that some demos do take advantage of uh, of, of such things. But um, in theory, um, you can only do the Y. You cannot do X on the on the sixty four. Let's let's say that. Um, so a be bear this in your head that um, the screen is being drawn and is being drawn by the copper okay and it's being done 50 times per second and our instructions the three instructions that we have for the copper are being executed within this time within one frame basically because what we do is tell it we draw one picture and this picture is constantly being drawn on the screen okay and then we can modify the picture by programming it Okay, so this is roughly what happens. Um, we need to write uh, these instructions. So now we arrive to the point of how we write um, uh, the, these instructions um, for the copper, how we tell it to move, how we tell it to, to move something to a custom chip register and how you tell it to wait for a particular raster line. Okay, so we are going to start uh, talking about this now. Okay, so we um, already said, so here in this part, in this paragraph, he's saying that it has three instructions, uh, which is move, wait, and also skip. You can see them, I hope you can see my mouse pointer, and I'm indicating them to you with the mouse pointer. Okay, so move, wait, and skip, okay? Now, in the book, okay, he's giving his, this is very nice the way he explains it actually, and very simple, okay? I wish the Amiga hardware manual explained this in, a, in the same thing that Fabio did, okay? So, we already spoke, um, uh, we already said that to move something to a custom register, we do a move word, uh, something okay a value to our let's say color zero okay index zero okay to do uh, the same thing for the copper we write divine constant uh, word um, data okay so basically what we are saying here is hey we want to write in register 180, okay, which is color index zero, okay, which is the same register here. Remember, there's a hidden DFF in front of it, okay? And then we want to write this value. It's the opposite of the move. Also, in move, you have source and destination. On the copper, you have destination source, okay? Don't want to confuse you. Just remember that whatever you have here is being copied to um, uh, the custom register, basically. So it's a very nice way of explaining it by showing this and then doing uh, the defined constant word. So that is our move, okay? And we just uh, told the copper like this to change the color of color index zero. Okay, so here is he's going to say that there is a hidden, okay, DFF, which I already mentioned, and I do not need to go uh, into more detail. Um, he's also going to say that, you know, there are other color registers, but the custom chip registers are always at an even address, and you also program anything on the Amiga at an even address, okay? So remember, uh, you cannot use odd addresses on the Amiga because you get a guru um, just to uh, be clear on that only word uh, can be used okay because we are using the custom chip registers and the custom chip registers are worldwide okay so here okay simple example okay we are moving, we are setting the colors of color index zero to color index three, okay? 
don't be confused by the colors here okay he's, he's just showing that we have four colors but this is color index zero color index one color index two color index three i it could be that because the, i see two skipped here it could be that that's an error in the manual so it should be zero one two three um but yeah i mean it's acceptable uh, that there might be some typo on the manual okay um so fabio has showed us that we are setting okay these four index color index uh, registers with the first one is black okay it's zero zero okay the f and remember these follow the pattern red green blue so this is red this is green and this is blue so the first one is an f so which is full color red okay the second one is full color green okay and the third one okay in the, in 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 the nibble i'm talking when i say it's blue and it's full color blue okay remember also that on asim pro okay if you type equal r and then 180 it gives you the help on the on the custom chip register okay um it covers okay as in pro i don't think the other other as in one i don't think it does but as in pro covers um ocs ecs and aga chipset documentation okay so you have that built into the assembler how did i skip something okay so wait is you is used so that we wait on a location on the screen either on the line on a line and on the x of a of a of the co of of the rust line for now just consider we're only waiting for a line okay just to make things simple okay so our copper list will be made of we're setting a color in this case we're setting it to black okay we're setting color index zero to black we're telling it to wait we will going to cover what weight is and then we are setting the same register okay in blue so basically we split the screen with two colors and we did not need to use an interrupt like as i said on the commodore 64 so how do we tell how does the wait command work and how we tell the copper that we have a wait command okay so a wait command is composed of so as always we start with define constant word okay then we have these two bytes okay this word which is actually a word is two bytes no so the first byte specifies the y on the screen the second byte specifies the x okay i was saying that uh, the first byte is the um, y value the second is the x value i will explain better the x value okay so was he bear with me if you want to explain the x just in case and the last bit okay the f f f e in simple words okay when you see f f f e it means wait it is the wait command of the copper to be fair it is a mask okay we are telling it that whatever is in ff okay in the first byte of this word we are considering it as an x as a y sorry and what is in fe okay is um in the x i think it is um or the i think it's an or um to be honest i never um I, I knew it but right now it doesn't come to my head um all i know all i i remember and this is me being um 
through let's say my experience but you will you will do the same when i see fffe boom that's a wait command okay and i do not go, need to go into the detail of what happens behind the scene how this is a wait command okay so um yeah just consider fffe as the wait command now the x uh, value okay i believe he uh, actually i will not mention it now because he talks a bit later on uh, so i will mention the x i will explain the x in a minute okay so we are saying to the copper right now wait on rustel line 16 remember this is hex so 10 1 0 is hex is 16 and uh, on the x uh, axis where it is uh, 7 i will explain this in a better way but right now that's what it is um i think the book has got an error there uh, as far as i know this is the y and this is the x um so he's saying the opposite way um so just bear with with me on that yeah this is definitely should really be y and this should be really x so that's a that's a an error on the book as i said here he said fffe significa weight okay so he's saying fffe means weight that's it okay amen <laughs> how we tell so we we the copper is drawing our screen right and we told it okay wait change the color to a certain value then wait to a certain raster line then change it to another value but how we tell the copper that we have finished with our program okay that that is what we want and that is one frame loop you want uh, we want the copper to do all that constantly okay changing doing those two colors while it's drawing how we tell it um it's an end it's an end of our program of our copper list and basically um to end our copper okay we use this command okay which is f f f f comma f f f e the reason why we use f f f f f f it is because it's an impossible destination it doesn't exist okay and that's how the copper knows that this is the end of our program okay um if you um want to compare it to weight okay okay remember it's an ffe also so here we have a weight okay till the end okay and as i said we are specifying the end of the screen basically when the copper ends okay when it arrives here it arrives at this so it read our program and it it reads that it starts again from the top and it starts um how to say uh, executing again the same program remember we only have one program and with the our program said do this okay do these things just keep that in mind it's a continuous loop so we did told the copper to do something and it's looping it's a for loop or do loop okay do loop that loops constantly and never ends for those that know basic or have an idea of basic we um although we are seeing things on the screen and we are changing color okay we do not actually have a screen we just have raster lines this is not like the commodore 64 where we always have a screen well you can switch off the screen uh, but there's always memory allocated to the screen um so in theory you always have a screen while on the amiga not necessarily you have a screen um in this case we are using the copper we are just using the raster lines the raster lines are always there but the raster lines don't take memory okay um so if you're doing something with the copper okay some effect 
and you can you are only using index color zero okay um to create that effect that is basically not having a screen and that is quite fast okay because when you don't have bit planes on the Amiga um, things are a lot more faster okay so we need to tell the copper okay that we do not have a screen okay and we do that okay by adding at the beginning okay by adding at the beginning so you see let me see if it lets me select we are telling the copper okay the first thing when the copper starts is going to do this no bit planes okay we do not want any bit planes so we are moving into register custom register um 100 100 hex um which is bpl con zero okay it's the only register that i know by heart uh, i think <laughs> well the ff180 i also know but yeah <laughs> It's, it's not that I know them by heart. There are people that know these by heart, but I don't. Um, and uh, by moving 200 hex into register 100, okay, we are telling no bit planes. And for those that are curious, okay, just to remind you, okay, DFF 100. okay has got all these options okay but we are talking about 200 in in hex is bit 9 okay we are changing bit 9 we always need to have this as one so these first four bits are zero these first four bits are zero okay then the next nibble this bit is zero but we need this one on okay so it's bit nine uh where was i um yeah so we told the processor the coprocessor which is the copper coprocessor okay it's a helper to the cpu okay so coprocessor um to switch off the bit planes set our color to black okay then wait uh, at 7f okay which is somewhere in the middle of the screen okay and change the color of index 0 to blue and then our program finishes okay so that is our copper list okay um just although i i i am saying this is the copper list there is a bit more work that needs to be done okay but in terms of defining a copper list this is what needs to be done okay um but as you see we didn't write a complex interrupt program to handle something on the screen okay we just wrote a series of data words okay to and we need to figure out how to tell the copper this is our data okay but i don't want to confuse you that is something that we will cover in a minute Um, remember that there are in a normal Amiga, not an AGA Amiga, okay, OCS and DCS, there are 31 color registers from 0 to 31, okay, and he is mentioning them here, okay, that starts at DFF180 and we end at DFF1BE, okay. Now, remember we specified that a color is red green blue and we said that each color each one of these uh, guns you know these beans uh, can take a value from zero 
to f that is 16 combinations so 16 times 16 times 16 that makes 4096 colors okay possible colors on the amiga that's how we have 4096 colors okay because each gun okay which put something on the screen put puts a color on the screen has a luminance let's say that of from zero to f okay and combining those all together we can have a color okay a number of colors of 4096 so one register okay even if we are using one color index register okay with one color in index register we can display all the colors on the screen by waiting okay a series of times on the screen and changing the color each time okay and which there are demos that do it okay to display the full color on the 4096 colors on the screen we already said that there are two ways of how to change the color in a color register okay or in a custom register <clears throat> which is here it is the same as he said earlier he's just repeating to make you aware okay of how to change things um so uh, basically um we are moving black in color index zero and here actually okay we are moving white f f okay into color index zero okay so if there was a weight somewhere on the screen we would see the let's say the top part black and the bottom part white okay um but this is to show you uh, both ways of how to write an instruction to change something in a custom chip register so here he actually explained we are seeing actually two extremes one is black one is white which i explained already remember the colors are there's a hidden zero okay so the colors are zero okay for ecs okay and ocs it's zero and then re red green blue okay which i explained further up here and the book also explained further up here not just i um so remember it's red green blue and actually um it's uh, each one of them okay it's a nibble okay so if this is if gb funny enough is gb if gb is a uh, is a word uh, sorry it's a byte the b is a nibble okay the G is a nibble, the R is a nibble, and the last word nibble is at zero, is always at zero. Okay. Okay, so here he um, gives a number of um, sample colors that we can use uh, for our uh, color registers. Okay is just an example just to show how we can manipulate the colors and create uh, the colors basically this is white and here he ends up with black this is blue this is blue how to say clear blue let's say that uh, this is blue sky okay and all all the rest okay i do not need to um be translating those um but you understand the concept so we um have our copper list and it is executing our copper but in reality okay there is one obstacle okay on the amiga which is called DOS or workbench or anything <laughs> that allows multitasking. So we need to kill the OS to program the uh, hardware. Okay. So I use the word kill. This is my 
terminology for removing the OS. Okay, uh, basically we do not want the OS, so we remove it, we kill it. We don't need anymore the OS, and it's our and we decide whether we want to return to the OS or not. If we want to loop forever and not return to the OS, we don't, and so and so we don't need to even save the values related to the OS. Um, but in normal Amiga circumstances, we always have the OS. Um, we I'm running as in pro from workbench okay so we have the OS there okay even when the Amiga boots and doesn't log workbench it is still doing some form of multitasking okay behind the scene okay um, in fact you can open more than one shell so it is doing some type of tasking so there is always um, this damn operating system and we need to switch it off okay else the operating system is always going to take control of the copy list and is going to draw its own copy list its own copy list and doesn't care about us so basically we need to tell to tell the os hey stop taking control of the of the copy list of the copper we want the copy and we don't want you anymore okay and now we want the copper to do our job not your job okay that's what we need to do okay so to do that okay um we need to call some os uh, routines okay to kill the os and tell the amiga get rid of the os we don't need it um But before we start there, you need to know what happens when you switch on the Amiga, okay? So, I'm pretty sure that there are people that know what happens when the Commodore starts, Commodore 64 starts, okay? Where it goes and from where it starts executing, okay? Same thing is the Amiga. There's a fixed address that never changes, okay, that starts the Amiga, the Amiga always starts from there. The only difference from the Amiga to the Commodore 64 is that the addresses are fixed. After the first address, the rest is always the same. Okay, they are always, they, they do not change. On the Amiga, these can change. Only the first address is fixed. The rest is relative, okay? Or, um, what other word I can use instead of relative? Um, Aussie, <laughs> now it's time to talk. <laughs> um, is there another word that we can use instead of relative for beginners uh, that might get confused? Um, it's dynamic programming. It's di it, it goes anywhere. It can go anywhere in memory. Okay, but the first address is always fixed. Um, Offset, yeah, offset can um, can do. Uh, Philip said pure, uh, not really. Uh, I think pure is more the sixty four than the Amiga. Um, but yeah, it's dynamic. Displaced, yes, too little uh, relative to something, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's dynamic. Once we know, have the base address of the OS where it is, where it starts, the rest is all dynamic, somewhere in memory, okay? We always have to uh, start but from this address. And this address is called the exec base, okay? It's a reason why it's called the exec base. It start executing from there, <laughs> okay? The first thing that it does is from there okay so it reads the value that there is in address 4 our magic address from where the amiga starts is always address 4 uh yes sysbase but exec base is better um because sysbase can mean that you have the os already while um so yeah 
our exec base is address 4 it's the magic address on the Amiga all Amigas has got starts from this address I do not know of an Amiga that starts differently okay so correct me if wrong here but as far as I know all Amiga starts from this address with till the processor 68040 I do not know 68060 so I do not know if there's some I don't know some condition that starts it uh, differently but they all start from address 4 okay the address 4 contains a value it's a long word and that is where the exec library starts or is our exec is actually there's an exec structure and then there's the library the, the jump routines of the library um so um location four location five remember it's a long word location six location seven contain a value there that is from where the amiga starts okay that value is loaded and it jumps to that address okay the amiga starts executing from the address that is there now the exec is a library per se it's got a routine is the routine that we see with the hand okay asking us to insert a floppy it calls other libraries like the gfx libraries um, so the each library has got a structure okay has got some for those that know c some type of uh, uh, structure um, that is either byte word or long word that defines certain things that's what a structure is it's a data list basically and then uh, there's a a series of jump routines okay of a series of jumps and these jumps are our library calls okay so each library has got this okay um and we are going to see how to access the uh, amiga library routines um so what um ozzy mentioned earlier um uh, alloc mem okay is the book is not going to cover alloc mem right now okay but it's the same principle we will use the same principle um, to um, use some uh, library calls to do some library calls okay so what are we going to do so we're going to move what's in what's in address four okay and store it into a six the library routines use a six as the base address okay so we load the exec base in fact he mentions exec base into a6 okay <clears throat> everybody knows that address 4 is the exec base okay and whatever value is there um we jump the amiga jumps and start executing now Fabio mentions a way of writing okay remember the addresses are long word but you can specify dot w to save some memory okay um i believe this takes two bytes less if you use this four dot w okay and it's a way of optimizing so it's a good way of remembering that if you are going to use one of the lower end addresses like page zero on the on the commodore 64 you have the same thing on the motorola um you can use the 4.w okay that's a, an address um that can be shortened okay it can be dot word so we did that okay so we are going to call minus 78 a6 okay I'm going to explain don't get 
don't don't despair and start questioning what is minus seven uh, 78 i will explain but for now we're going to call minus 78 that is the routine that we need to use to get control of the um to kill the os and get control and it doesn't affect uh, the copper list and the copper list is ours now okay after we call jump to subroutine minus 178 hex um a6 okay and he tells us to do exercise 3a which i'm going to show Let's load it. Uh, set that up. Okay. And let's assemble it. Awesome. Did assemble it. There you go. There is no difference in terms of visuality, okay, of what we see here to the exercise to the first chapter okay but i tell you this is going to change okay right now why he is showing this example okay so why um why he started with this uh, with with the same exercise that we had in chapter one because that exercise okay is constantly looping to take back the uh, copper, okay, to do something to the copper and update the screen. If it was not constantly looping, okay, it, um, uh, we would not have seen anything, okay, on the screen, okay? That's why it was constantly looping, but, the same example, okay, that we had in chapter one, we created the same effect, but this time we killed the OS, okay? Notice the first, okay, the first two lines, we get the exec base, okay? And then we jump to minus 78, which is disable multitasking. It means we are disabling the multi. I will explain what, all that is okay for now assume gsr minus 78 a6 is killing the uh, removing the multitasking if you remove the multitasking you are sure there is no os the os cannot do anything okay it's still there but we took control of it now now we are in control then we have our little program that we know constant loop displaying things on the screen okay and once we finish once we click the left mouse button we um how to say we return back to the os okay we enable the multitasking and the os continues okay from where it left just note by doing this we did not how to say cared about where the copper list for the os is okay we just actually didn't care at all we ignored it and it's up to the os to restore it back but because we are not doing anything the os is able to restore it back we are just changing a color in uh, in index uh, zero so it's fine Okay, but you could do things that the OS will get corrupted. Uh, let's say the copper list of the OS will get corrupted, not the OS. Um, if you don't restore the uh, copper list back to what the OS had uh, before, okay, before you took control of it, I'll, I'll let, if you want to return back to the OS, okay, because if you do, you're not returning back to the OS, you wouldn't care anyway. So no need to do that, neither. But in this case, we always want to return to the assembler. <laughs> so we need to return back to the OS because the assembler is running on the OS. Um, so that's why um, 
we need to do that. Um, let me get the book and go through what he's saying. Because of course, as you know, the book has got its own notes for each example. So I explained that already. Um, minus 78 is disable multitasking. This is the normal waiting for the mouse button, for the left mouse button while updating color index zero. And this is re-enabling the multitasking, okay? Here, okay, he is saying, okay, and this is <clears throat> something that you, you will discover. Um, if you want to debug a program that you have disabled the um, operating system, it's very difficult, okay? The debugger will not work. The debugger relies on the operating system. So you can either use something like Action Replay or HRT Mon, okay, to debug your program, okay, or skip the routine where you are disabling the operating system. But of course, you cannot see anything on the screen. You will uh, um, see what's happening in the memory. This paragraph explains what happens when we disable the multitasking, okay. When we disable the multitasking, we actually stop anything working on the Amiga. The mouse pointer won't move anymore. The disk will stop clicking, you know, for those that are using a real Amiga, uh, th this disk will stop clicking, okay? Because that click is coming from an interrupt, okay? And anything else stops working, okay? So that's how you know that you have control of the Amiga completely. Now, there are lots of people, okay? Uh, I mentioned this yesterday, but I'm going to mention it because this, I, I, I avoid this argument, okay? There are lots of people that program the Amiga using C, okay? And they program the Amiga using it through the OS, okay? Unless you are really disabling the hardware, the, the interrupts and anything else that you need to do, you are not really taking uh, control of the Amiga. In fact, if you write a program in C and you tell me that you have taken control of the OS, I'm pretty sure I can still drag the screen down, okay? You need to do certain things to be able to uh, have control of the OS. I've met people okay that know c very well they preach c and just because they wrote some programs running on workbench okay on the amiga they think that they took control of the os it is not true and when i hear somebody arguing about this okay i do not answer i know the answer i'm sharing it with you but these type of people do not want to um, hear this okay um they are so obsessed with c uh, that it can do everything and can do anything that they do not realize um, that actually there is a bit more to it than that. And this is one of the things you need to call this routine, okay? Disable multitasking, okay? That's the first thing, which is actually, okay? I'm going to say what I used to do 30 years ago. I did not used to call this routine disable multitasking, but if you disassemble, uh, disassemble this routine, okay, on in the Kickstarter ROM, what it does is calling, um, uh, it's, I think it's called DMA con zero. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say zero, but one of the DMA cons, okay? And it disables the interrupts. That's what it does, this routine, if you disassemble it. Um, and that is what makes the Amiga multitasking. It's the interrupts or the DMAs, okay, that it has. I mean, interrupts and DMAs and all this stuff around it, okay? So, please uh, note that you need to call this routine to really have uh, access 
to disable the OS. Also, the hardware, the coders, okay, I did not used to do that. I just used to do uh, um, disable the OS through DMA con calling it direct directly. And most of the demo coders, this is what they do, okay. But here we are doing it in a neat way, okay. We are doing it the neat way um, instead of doing a brute force in a way, um, because normally a demo coder doesn't, let's say. If it's a multi-loader and all this, so they doesn't return back to the OS. Okay. Um, Ozzy, I expected you to do some comments here about this. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty sure you know more than me <laughs> because I forgot most of this stuff. Um, the other thing that stops, remember, we used to do AD assemble and debug our debugger will stop executing um we will not be able to run the debugger ad will stop okay after we execute the minus 78 the command ad in as in pro will stop and will not let us work the let us use the debugger what he uh, tells us here Okay, to do one thing. He tells us to do AD. Okay, so I just told you that it doesn't work. But if we do AD, we haven't yet executed anything, no? So it will work, but then it will jam as soon as we do as we do the JSR minus one seven eight. Okay, so we haven't executed anything yet. Okay. Now we used to execute each instruction by pressing the right mouse arrow okay or sorry not right mouse arrow cursor okay the right arrow cursor okay um i'm just need to show you the debugger that is there okay that's the debugger and it is there it's running we haven't yet executed the jsr minus 78 so instead of pressing uh, the right arrow, right cursor uh, arrow, okay, we press the down cursor arrow, and that means skip. So we are going to skip the move long, okay, 4.w, a6, okay, I just skipped it. As you see, a6 did not change, okay stayed with the same value that it had okay and i'm going to skip the jsr to minus 178 if i don't skip it my os will halt will stop working uh, and i cannot do anything okay and i the only way to get it back in this case is to reset okay so i'm skipping it so i'm going to show you that the my mouse pointer is still working okay if I did not skip it, the mouse pointer will not move anymore. Okay. So, and then we actually continue to exit. This is our, this is an infinite loop now. Okay. So we are checking for the mouse, but I wanted to make you aware. I'm going to skip the infinite loop and pretend that we're skipping the branch and we um, actually, it doesn't because now I started executing. Um, it, it continues to execute now. Um, basically, um, we are, by skipping the, um, by skipping the, um, the disabled multitasking, we were able to debug our program, okay? So that's the way to debug it. Okay, and we were able to return back to the uh, OS and to our assembler. So, um, I'm going to take the move the book and still look at it because I I will I will not remember things, and I'm going to do it as he's saying. This is very interesting what he's going to show us. Okay. Uh, so he's telling us to assemble it, and then do. M for 
okay and we get the four okay we get the four the four address and then so that is the value that is going into address six okay in in our code that we had uh, before um so we enter that we pressed four times should see this value okay okay now if you pass this first instruction and you press right or oh no, the, the line at the bottom uh, sorry i'm reading my notes okay so this time so let's compare what goes into a6 remember this value 40 0 or 8 30 okay a6 should contain that value now okay let's see there you go it's 40 0 0 or 8 30 okay so then we need to do minus 78 and this is um the beauty of it this is this is the, the clever part that, that i was missing I, I, because i knew it does something clever and and this is this is the part uh, i'm glad that fabio is reminding me uh, so we did m4 okay let's do it again so that i remember it then do disassemble okay four o o o o eight three o we did that and we saw our code but remember it's minus 78 so we scroll up and what do we see the jump routines the exact jump routines and minus 78 should be one of these okay uh i don't know which one it will be right now but minus 78 is one of these uh routines that is killing the os so if we had to jump okay now um, let's try to figure out which one is minus 78 um let me get my calculator um shift x so uh we have four o o o o eight three o minus um seventy eight it was right seven six eight seven uh, seven b eight sorry seven b eight so seven b eight seven b eight it's this one okay so if we disassemble that address f eight one eight nine two okay so the this is the routine that is being executed okay for o o o uh, sorry this remember this is in the um rom um 7b let me put the mouse pointer so that i don't so it's this one Uh, it is F eight one eight nine two. Boom! Look what it does. The, I told you I used to do it. I used to do it um, directly using the hardware register. What is it doing? It's doing a move to a hardware register. DFF O nine A. Okay. That's all it does, and then it adds something and returns. 
to the OS. It's all it does. Okay? So, if you want to know what DFF09A is, it should be what I said. That was 09A. I hope this is um, interesting. Um, 09A. Interrupt enable bits. Okay? That's all it's doing. Antenna, antenna, okay? It's disabling all the interrupts, okay? And there you go. Disabling all the interrupts, bye-bye OS. That's all it is. So I told you I used to do it directly without calling an OS routine. It's the same thing, okay? It's just an neater way, in a way, um, of doing it. I hope that was very helpful and informative. I mean, I like these things, to be honest. When, some, when I read the book and I went through this, uh, I loved it <laughs> because I had really forgotten about it. Let's see what else uh, the book says. Um, so, we figured out what minus 78 does, okay? It's impossible to remember this stuff. Well, uh, yeah, it's, um, you need the books, no? So, so yeah, I, I agree, I agree, Ozzy, it's, it's impossible to remember all this. Um, I'm going to explain what you are explaining right now. Um, later on, I mean, Fabio does explain it in this chapter, um, but yeah. So, um, so that code is in the ROM that we executed, okay? It, there's nothing special if you had to start studying the exec, okay, or kickstart, as it's called, because it's a group of library kickstart. Um, that is what you will find. What you saw there was kickstart an exec routine in kickstart that's all what it is um i told you there were many jumps um he's specifying that there um he, he's showing he's saying what we did here and then look he is showing we could replace that disable interrupts with the same routine ourselves, okay? We could replace it. Instead of calling the OS, calling a routine in the OS, we could replace it with these two lines. It's a copy of exactly what there was in the, in the, in the OS. So that is what he's saying here, okay? That I did. Uh, Yeah, this I forgot to mention. Um, the assembler has got a protection, okay? Uh, or the debugger, let's put it this way. When it tries to execute something which is outside uh, of the program, let's say our libraries, etc., and you're trying to um, tell it to execute it, it will not execute it, okay? It's a uh, so that you can do actual debugging, okay? So, in a way, it will not crash, okay? But if you force it, if you do it directly, like I was doing, okay? Not calling, not calling the uh, routine of the OS, it will crash, okay? So, keep that in mind. When you are killing the OS, if you are killing it through um, the OS itself by its own routines, the assembler won't crash, but if you are killing it uh, like I used to do, okay, or I actually I still do because I can show you code that I've written a few days ago, and that's what it does, um, it will crash the debugger. Um, let's see what else. We did all this. Um, 
with it all this he explains that is internal basically firm, um, firming the interrupts and now we are in 3b which um, we haven't yet arrived yet okay so I'm going to uh, finish with let me tell you till where I'm going to do because I do not want to skip more than what I did in the English version uh, sorry in the Italian version so I'm going to do till here okay that's the last part actually I, I did a bit more but I'm going to repeat this um, for the Italian part it's because twitch or whatever i don't know what happened it seems that it dropped so i'm going to repeat this because it's quite quite important so we are stopping basically here um so here uh what he says is no that exact is not all the kickstart it's true there is a uh, there are libraries um in kickstart uh, or functions or methods but there are also um other ones that you do upload or download from the floppy that you use from the floppy uh, i don't know why you use a upload or up that you access on the floppy okay um the amiga is able to know when when an uh, when a library is either in the kickstart or is on on floppy if it doesn't if it's not on kickstart then it's obviously it's on the floppy or on the hard disk uh, that's how it knows so um that's uh, basically what he's saying also, he is explaining <clears throat> the difference between he or we already did, but I'm I'm just going to repeat it. The difference between BSR and JSR. BSR, remember, is jump relative, and the um, is sixteen bit jump relative, so it cannot go everywhere. Okay, so it's either minus three two seven six eight or plus three two seven six seven. That's the relative distance that it can do BSR. JSR can go anywhere okay it can jump to any routine in our memory in all the other space of the amiga okay or of the 68000 or whatever cpu we have um this was our minimal program okay what did we do we load it our address okay into a d you know the exec base into a6 disable the uh, uh, multitasking then we should execute our program that is do, do execute our copy list our program that runs the copy list and then we return back to the os that's what we did now just to give you hints here down here okay because i did cover a little bit yesterday but i'm going to repeat it as i said because of the issue that there was on twitch um down here he's going to explain how to open and look for the library so something that ozzy was explaining earlier on when he uh, did the exec lib and all that stuff um he that explains how to know uh, and gets uh, because right now you tell me how did you know that it is minus seven e to call uh, disable multitasking? I will be explaining that in the next um, series, in the next in in uh, number eight, okay, of this series, uh, which is next Sunday, okay, uh, at um, eight o'clock, okay. Um, so, yeah, I think we have come to an end uh, thank you very much bye for now